Eric McKinney here with Greg Katz and Greg USC was in the Coliseum on Saturday for the first time for the 2020 fall camp. Uh, it, it was a scrimmage and they had it early in the morning trying to mimic what they're going to experience November 7th when Arizona State comes in. Curious your thoughts kind of uh, about that, the fact that it, it's the first scrimmage that they're in the Coliseum and, and that they're earlier in the morning switching up that, that fall schedule. Well, I don't know how tired they were. We saw about two minutes and 57 seconds of video, but the players that did come down the ramp in the brief video we saw of that portion, uh, some of them that were not in uniform were wearing uh, masks, colorful masks, I might add, very original. Uh, you know, the, the offense was dressed in red jerseys. The, the defense was in white. Uh, we saw plenty of uh, center snapping, and we saw plenty of quarterbacks throwing to receivers. Uh, not always did we see who was receiving them, but it was the idea that we saw them throwing the ball. We saw defensive backs backpedaling. Uh, you know, the normal thing that we would see, I think, during the season. But there were some clips that uh, we got to see. And, uh, you know, we, we could sit there and say, well, you know what? Uh, he's out there. He's dressed. He being Brew McCoy is an example. Uh, another one would be Drake London. And he made some good uh, catches. And, uh, you know, McCoy made some good catches. In fact, uh, there was a, uh, a Twitter release by, uh, by USC that did show McCoy getting a touchdown. He beat Adonis Ote. And uh, uh, I saw London uh, in this video, uh, you know, make some great moves. So all in all, uh, you know, it's good to see it. Uh, I'm sure the players, they appear to be very excited to be in the Coliseum. Uh, I mean, if you're going to go at nine in the morning, I mean, it's a lot better to be in the Coliseum. That'll get your juices flowing as opposed to the normal practice field. But was it really a scrimmage? You know, it seemed to me like it was a more of a glorified practice because we weren't given any statistics, which leads me to believe that, uh, you know, they, they did do some scrimmage segments, but it wasn't like what we'd see, uh, you know, or would want to see. But, uh you know, I'll just say that it's, it's, it's better when the media gets to see it. I understand why we're not, but it's, you know, kind of that thing where it's uh, trust but verify. It, it is tough. I mean, it, it's kind of welcome to how a lot of other college football media have, have been operating over the last few years and going back, you know, further than that, where coaches want to kind of shut down and, you know, access to practice and, and control the message. And USC – up till this point where their hand is kind of forced has been very good about, you know, letting people, letting media in to see scrimmages and, and being very open with that. So it's interesting for us to not sort of have eyes uh, on a scrimmage setting like this, where you're talking about some position battles uh, and some interesting things going on in the fall. I, I like the idea to scrimmage in the Coliseum at 9 a.m. I, I think Clay Helton is right on with that, to be able to understand where's the sun, you know, at, at this time, which way do, would we prefer to be going? Um, wh what does it sort of feel like out there in the morning? I, I think that's a good thing. And I'll be very interested when we hear from Clay Helton on Monday to see what he felt about kind of the energy at 9 a.m. If it's sort of a lethargic practice at 9 a.m., your first scrimmage, and then you go back there at 9 a.m. next Saturday, and it's the same kind of feeling how do you fix that before you just say, okay, well, we're showing up for the game uh, on, no on November 7th. So I'll be very curious, like you mentioned, what was the energy level like? Can, can they bring it at nine o'clock when they're practicing typically in the afternoon? So I, I think that is kind of a, a very interesting thing to try to figure out from this scrimmage. The other thing we saw, like you mentioned, we're, we're not there to see everything. So you're kind of relying on what coaches and, and what players are saying uh, and then, then the few video clips we're getting. But, boy, what we saw from Drake London, what we saw from Brew McCoy, it's a weird feeling right now to hear so much and see so much of them, two young guys, when you still have an Amon Ross St. Brown there, you still have a Tyler Vons there. We saw a, a little clip of Tyler Vons there uh, during that Saturday practice. But not, not so much that the page is turning to them, but they're ke maybe catching up to those guys. And, and you talk about losing Michael Pittman – and maybe being just as good or better as a wide receiver group with those two guys maturing. Uh, so far, what we've seen, again, limited, but of those two guys, I, I don't know how you're not fired up about the wide receiving core this year. I would like to make one note that I did jot down. And uh, even though the, the video was mainly concentrated on uh, 
London and, and McCoy and obviously the throw by, um, well, one of the throws was uh, by Matt Fink to McCoy. Uh, and uh, I noticed that uh, at left guard next to Elijah Vera Tucker was Justin Dietrich, uh, which I think is important because a lot of people thought Dietrich could be starting at one of the guard spots. And I'm not going to sit there and say he's the starting guard because I know they're going to mix and match uh, for a while because they don't want to get caught uh, in a situation where they don't have a, somebody who can plug in at center or guard or what have you. But it was just interesting to see that he was there uh, next to uh, Vera Tucker, who we know is obviously, what did we learn? We did learn that he's at left tackle. Okay. It sounds very trivial, but to see it means he's the left tackle. You know, I, w I was hoping that maybe I'd see the right side of the line and just see Jalen McKenzie there just to verify, uh, trust but verify that he is at right tackle. Uh, I'm, I want to see further video, hopefully we'll see in the future, uh, maybe the next scrimmage of just see who the guards are. I think that is important. I know Voorhees and, you know, Lee and Jimmins, I, we didn't get a chance to really see them on the video at all. Yeah, it'll be interesting. That offensive line spot, I think, would be one of those positions where kind of eagle eye focus, you know, for, from all media and attendance had it been just a, a regular fall camp. You mentioned Justin Dita, Andrew Voorhees, Liam Jimmins, a few of the names right there fighting for those guard spots. So again, we'll wait and see uh, Clay Helton going to address the media Monday morning, and I'm sure he'll have plenty of thoughts uh, about that Saturday scrimmage, but I know players and coaches, especially those first time, those first year defensive coaches excited to be in the Coliseum for that Saturday practice.